Whenever you have a fraction bar over a fraction bar, you have a complex fraction. One way to simplify is to look at the denominators, find the least common denominators. We'll look at multiples of the biggest, because that's the hardest to accommodate. Obviously, 10 doesn't work, because 8 won't fit into 10. Then we try 20, 30, 40 works, because 8 goes into 40. So 40 is our least common denominator. We're going to multiply by 40 over 40. Again, we're multiplying. On this first one, if it helps to see 40 is 40 over 1, that's 40 over 1. This way you have a fraction next to a fraction, and again, we're multiplying. Even here, technically I should have parentheses, but I'm indicating that I'm multiplying up here. Without parentheses, it might appear that I'm supposed to subtract, because the signs would be different in this case, but we're multiplying. Now prior to multiplication, we'll simplify. Divide by 8, divide by 8, leaves us with 5. 5 times 3 is 15. Divide by 10, that's a 1, but I just don't want to keep writing it, it gets too cluttered. Divide by 10, that's a 4. So 4 times 7 is 28. I should have indicated negative 7. So 4 times negative 7 is a negative 28. Since there's no common factors, our final answer is 15 over negative 28. Looking over here, the denominators are 9 and 6. So we look at multiples of 9. That doesn't work. 18 does work, so that's our least common denominator. We're going to multiply by 18 over 18. Divide by 9, that's a 1. Divide by 9 leaves us with 2. 2 times a negative 5y, this is negative 10y. Divide by 6, divide by 6 leaves us with 3. 3 times a negative y is negative 3y. So we can simplify this a little. Uh, negative divided by negative is positive. So we'll have 10 thirds and y cancels y, so there's no more variable. Now, 10 thirds is simplified, but you can also write this as 3 with 1 left over. Keep your denominator. Looking at this complex fraction, between the 12 and the 3, 12 is our least common denominator. So this means we'll multiply by 12 over 12. In this case, we can reduce right away because there's only one denominator in the numerator and one denominator in the denominator. So 12 goes into 12 once, 12 goes into 12 once. Now this one is gonna get distributed to both terms in this case, it's a 1, so nothing will change. But I want to emphasize that this fraction bar is also a grouping symbol. So it's as if you have a set of parentheses here. Again, the 1 will go to each term. Divide by 3. Divide by 3 leaves you with 4. And again, it's as if there's parentheses, so 4 gets distributed to each term. To show that distribution more explicitly, I'll rewrite. 
In the numerator, I'm distributing a 1, which is kind of a pointless exercise. But in the denominator, I'm distributing a 4. So we end up with 1x, or simply x, 1 times 7, 7. Bring over our plus. 4 times x is 4x. Bring over the negative. And then 4 times 2 is 8. This is a simplified form of our original complex fraction. Looking at this one, we'll first focus on the coefficients and then we'll worry about the variables and exponents. But the two denominators we're concerned with are 8a squared, 4a cubed. So we would look at multiples of 8, but since 4 goes into 8, 8 is our least common denominator as far as the coefficients. For the variables, we'll need a to the third. Because with a to the second, we couldn't fit a to the third into it. So 8 a to the third is our least common denominator. This means we'll multiply by 8a to the third over 8a to the third. And we can cancel right away. 8a squared cancels two of these. So it's a to the first. And then divide by 8, divide by 8 leaves us with a 1. So in the numerator, we're just multiplying by an a. This a has to go to each term. In the denominator, a to the third cancels a to the third. Divide by 4, divide by 4. This leaves us with 2. And the 2 gets distributed to each term. So again, in the numerator, we're distributing an a to each term. So I'll show that. Multiply by a, multiply by a. In the denominator, we're multiplying 2 times each term. And then we just have to see what's left. So a times 6a is 6a squared. You bring over the sign. And then a times 5 we usually write as 5a. In our denominator, 2 times a, 2a. Bring over the sign. 2 times 3 leaves us with 6. Nothing here can cancel. Even though there's a 6 and a 6, you have two terms added or subtracted. So you can't cancel unless the numerator and denominator are identical. Looking at this one, we'll focus on just the denominators. So we have a 2, a 10, 15, and a 5 to be concerned with. We'll look at multiples of the biggest. Obviously, 15 doesn't work, 10 won't fit, 2 won't fit. But when we get to 30, that works fine. So 30 is our least common denominator. We'll multiply by 30 over 30. So this means the 30 is going to go to each term in the numerator and each term in the denominator. So I'll rewrite this to show that explicitly. So now we'll show the 30 distributed to each term. And prior to multiplying, we'll reduce. Common factor is 2. So divide by 2, divide by 2, leaves us with 15 times 1, simply 15. I'll bring over the sign. 
Do the same for the denominator. Looking here, the 10 and the 30 divide by 10, divide by 10 leaves us with 3 times 7, 21. Divide by 15, divide by 15 is 2 times 4. So that leaves us with 8. Divide by 5, divide by 5 is 6 times 2 gives us 12. And we can clean this up. 15 and 21 is 36. Eight and 12 is 20. I've kind of run out of room here, but there's a common factor of four. So divide by four leaves us with nine. Divide by four leaves us with five. And nine fifths can also be written as one and four fifth. Either answer is fine. Looking at this problem, as far as coefficients, 12 will work because 4 goes into 12, and with the r's, you'll need r squared. So 12r squared is the least common denominator. We'll multiply by 12r squared over 12r squared. And when we multiply, we'll have to distribute that to each term. I'll show this distributed to each term. We'll simplify prior to multiplication. R squared cancels R squared, so it's simply 12 times 1. I'll bring over the signs. Divide by 12, divide by 12 leaves us with 1, so it's 5r squared. Over here, r cancels one of them, so it's r to the first, and 12 times 5 is 60, so this leaves us with 60r. Divide by 4, divide by 4 leaves us with 3 so it's 3 r squared times 1 3 r squared this cannot be simplified so it's our final answer looking at this complex fraction we'll first focus on the 6 and the 12 12 is our least common denominator So we'll multiply by 12 over 12. And when we multiply, we have to distribute 12 to each term. To show that explicitly, I'll rewrite this. Now showing the 12 distributed. And prior to multiplying, we simplify. Divide by 6, divide by 6, leaves us with 2 times x. Bring over the signs. Here we don't have a denominator to simplify, so it's 12 times 3. We can simplify here. Divide by 12. Divide by 12 leaves us with 1 times x, or simply x. And again, 12 times 3. This is simplified as far as possible. If I had a 2x here, then this would be equivalent to a 1. But if anything is different, when you have terms added and subtracted, you cannot cancel at all. Looking at this one, our common denominator is y. So that's also our least common denominator. Which means we'll multiply by y over y. And when we multiply, we distribute to each term. 
showing the y distributed. So y times 5 we usually write as 5y. I'll bring over the signs. And over here, y cancels y. So you're left with 2. y times 3 we'll write as 3y. And y cancels y, so it's 1 times 7. Just as here it was 1 times 2. This is simplified as much as possible, so it's our final answer. We're going to look at two more problems. These are the most complicated we've done so far. The denominator is actually x plus 2. So x plus 2 is our least common denominator. This means we'll multiply by x plus 2 over x plus 2. And when we multiply, we have to distribute it to each term. Now I'll show x plus 2 distributed to each term. And I need to emphasize when this fraction bar is here, the x plus 2 is grouped together because that's a grouping symbol as well as a division indicator. So I'm going to put these in parentheses just to emphasize they're held together. Just so it looks more familiar. I could write it up here, but it looks a little stranger that way. And again, to show the x plus 2 distributed here, I'll put it after this negative 1. Reducing before we multiply, x plus 2 cancels x plus 2, or I should say it goes in one time. So that's 1 times 3. Now over here there's nothing to cancel, but we have to distribute a positive 4 to each term inside parentheses. So it'll be plus 4x and plus 8. Here x plus 2 goes into x plus 2 one time, so 1 times 7. And here we have negative 1, has to get distributed to each term, so that's negative x or negative 1x. And then negative 1 times positive 2 leaves us with negative 2. We can combine some like terms, so I'll put 4x first. 3 and 8 is 11. It's positive 11. I'll put negative x first. It's a negative 1x, but you don't have to put the 1. And then positive 7, negative 2 leaves us with positive 5. This is the simplified form. This is the last one we'll do. 3k minus 5 is our only denominator, so that's the least common denominator. This means we'll multiply by 3k minus 5 over 3k minus 5. And again, when we multiply, we have to distribute to each term. When I distribute 3k minus 5 to this first term, I won't be able to reduce anything. There's no denominator. So it's just going to multiply. So 3k minus 5. But when I distribute this to the second term, I will be able to cancel it. And again, I'll put it in parentheses to emphasize it's held together. With the denominator, it's much the same procedure. So looking over here, we'll have to distribute the k to each term. This will be 3k squared. minus 5k and then 3k minus 5 goes into 3k minus 5 one time so that's 1 times a positive 2 or plus 2 over here we'll have to distribute the 2 to each term so that's 6k 
minus 10. And then looking here, 3k minus 5 goes into 3k minus 5 one time. So it's 1 times a negative 5. The numerator we can't simplify, but the denominator we have these two like terms. So our final answer, the numerator will be the same. I've kind of run out of room here. So I'll write it up here. The denominator will be 6k minus 15. So this is our simplified answer. If you would like some practice with these concepts, as long as you're at my website, I have two worksheets, each with a detailed answer key.